Anthony stepped out of his car after a long, grueling shift at the hospital. The weight of exhaustion bore down on his shoulders, but there was something comforting about being home. As he inhaled deeply, the cool evening air filling his lungs, he allowed himself a brief moment of peace. Finally, after hours of chaos, he was back on familiar ground. But as his hand reached for the keys in his pocket, a noise cut through the silence like a sharp blade, footsteps approaching. Hey, you! The voice was harsh, dripping with hostility. Anthony froze, his heart skipping a beat. Slowly, he turned, his eyes narrowing as they focused on the approaching figure. It was Bill, his neighbor, a man he barely interacted with and by choice. Bill was infamous in the neighborhood for his confrontational nature, a man who seemed to thrive on conflict, always with a sneer twisting his lips. Anthony felt the tension coil in his chest as Bill stomped toward him. A storm was brewing, and Anthony knew it. What do you want? Anthony asked, his voice low and controlled. Though inside, his instincts were screaming at him to brace for the worst. Bill stopped just a few feet away, his eyes wild with fury. I knew it was you living here, he spat, his voice trembling with barely contained rage. What kind of neighborhood is this turning into? Anthony remained still, but the surge of anger within him was undeniable. He had faced hostility before. He had seen the dark, ugly side of humanity in his profession. People who couldn't see past their own ignorance, their own prejudice. Bill was one of them. What's your problem, Bill? Anthony's voice was calm, but his patience was wearing thin. Bill's face twisted, his lips curling into a sneer. He stepped closer, invading Anthony's space. You people? Bill began, his tone laced with venom. Always moving into places where you don't belong. Think you're better than the rest of us because you're some hotshot doctor. The word doctor rolled off Bill's tongue like an accusation, an insult. Anthony felt his jaw tighten, his hands balling into fists at his sides. His pulse quickened. He'd been here before too many times. It always started like this. A comment, a look, a shove, and then things spiraled out of control. He took a deep breath, willing himself to stay calm, though every muscle in his body tensed, ready for what might come next. Bill wasn't done. His voice rose, echoing through the quiet street. You think a white coat makes you special? You think it gives you the right to live here next to people like me? Decent, hardworking folks. Anthony's mind raced, every instinct telling him to walk away. But he couldn't. Not this time. There was something in Bill's voice, something in the way he spat the words like poison that made Anthony stay rooted to the spot. Maybe it was the countless times he had swallowed his pride, biting his tongue in the face of ignorance. Maybe it was the need for Bill to see him as more than the color of his skin. Bill, Anthony said, his voice steady. This isn't about where I live, is it? Bill's sneer faltered for a brief second, but then he stepped even closer, his breath hot and acrid in the cool evening air. You don't belong here, he hissed. His fists clenched so tightly that his knuckles turned white. Anthony's eyes narrowed. He dealt with anger before, more volatile, more dangerous than this. But something about Bill's rage was unnerving. This wasn't just about him moving into the neighborhood. This was about fear, deep-seated and irrational, bubbling to the surface in the form of hate. And then, out of nowhere, a voice pierced the thick tension. Bill? Bill, is that you? Anthony and Bill both turned in unison, their heads snapping toward the source of the voice. Across the street, standing on the edge of her porch, was Janet, Bill's wife. She looked frail, the weight of illness visible in her hunched posture and the way she clutched her shawl tightly around her. Go back inside, Janet. Bill barked, his voice harsh and unforgiving. I'm handling this. But Janet didn't move. Instead, she took a tentative step forward, her eyes fixed on Anthony. There was a glimmer of recognition in her gaze, and suddenly her face paled. Wait, wait a minute, she murmured, her voice trembling. It's you. Bill shot a confused glance at his wife, then back at Anthony, who stood motionless. What are you talking about, Janet? But Janet wasn't listening to Bill anymore. Her eyes remained locked on Anthony, and her face softened with something that Anthony had seen many times before, gratitude. It's you, she repeated, her voice louder this time. You're the doctor who saved me. Bill's body went rigid, his face draining of color. What, what are you talking about? Anthony remained silent, watching as the truth slowly began to unravel in front of Bill. Janet took another step forward, 
her frail frame trembling slightly. A few months ago, she said softly, her voice barely above a whisper. When I was rushed to the hospital, I thought I was going to die. The other doctors said it was too late, that there was nothing they could do. But you! Her voice cracked with emotion as tears welled in her eyes. You saved me. Bill's mouth fell open, but no words came out. He stumbled backward, his bravado shattered, his fists unclenching as the full weight of what his wife had just said sank in. The man he had tried to belittle, the man he had spat his hatred at, was the very same man who had saved Janet's life. For a long, agonizing moment, silence hung in the air. Bill's face was a mask of disbelief, his eyes darting between his wife and Anthony as if trying to comprehend the magnitude of his mistake. I... I didn't know... Bill stammered, his voice barely audible now, stripped of all its anger, its hatred. He looked at Anthony, his eyes filled with something that might have been regret. I didn't know. Anthony met his gaze, his own emotions in turmoil. There was no satisfaction in seeing Bill broken like this. But there was something else, a quiet sense of vindication, a deep knowledge that he had done what was right. Slowly, he exhaled, the tension leaving his body. You didn't care to know, Anthony said, his voice calm but firm, his words cutting through the stillness like a blade. But here's the thing, Bill. I don't need your gratitude. I don't need your approval. I'm not here for that. He took a step forward, meeting Bill's gaze head on. People like me, he said, his voice steady. We're here to help people like you, whether you think we belong or not. Bill swallowed hard, his face flushed with shame. He opened his mouth to speak, but no words came. Janet, now standing beside him, gently touched his arm, her expression one of quiet resolve. Come on, Bill, she whispered softly. Let's go inside. Bill nodded numbly, allowing his wife to lead him away. But as they turned, Janet's eyes lingered on Anthony for a moment longer, filled with gratitude, with something that words couldn't express. Anthony stood there in the driveway, watching them disappear into the house. The night was still, the street empty once again. He was alone, but there was a quiet triumph in the silence, a victory that didn't need to be shouted or celebrated. He had won, not with fists or anger, but with the truth of his actions. Remember to like, share, and subscribe for more powerful stories that challenge perspectives and celebrate the strength of the human spirit.